the stonefish. Stonefish aren't going to win any beauty contests, unless the pageant is for best rock lookalike. Their tiny unreflective eyes and rough skin blend in perfectly with their environment. A large head, an even bigger mouth, and a home full of, yeah, it's rocks. And just because you're on the beach doesn't mean you're safe. Stonefish can survive for 24 hours out of the water. Stepping on one or even handling one won't be that fun. Their dorsal fin spines have extremely strong venom. It shoots out when they get stepped on, and can lead to paralysis or even heart failure. You'll need help fast. No wonder they're one of the most dangerous creatures in the water, or anywhere. Be careful when scrambling around rocky areas. They love to play hide-and-seek. The Deep Sea Dragonfish If there were a prize for the most hideous fish in the ocean, the deep sea dragonfish would win. With slimy, scaleless skin, massive teeth, and a face only a mother could love, this bad boy of the sea is nothing to mess with. It likes to swim between 700 feet and 6,000 feet below the surface of the ocean, where the waters are the darkest and coldest. Along with some other creatures on this list, the deep sea dragonfish relies on its bioluminescent body parts to catch prey. It also uses its hanging appendage, which boasts a little red light on the end, coming out from its lower jaw. Many fish mistake this little light for prey luring them right into the jaws of the deep-sea dragonfish. Very clever dragonfish. Very clever indeed. The Fangtooth The Mariana Trench is an underwater trench with a depth of 35,000 feet, nearly 7 miles below the ocean surface. Let that sink in. While scientists know the Mariana Trench exists, it's one of the least explored places on Earth. It's also the deepest area of Earth's oceans. And although many creatures down there probably haven't even been seen by humans yet, scientists have had the creepy pleasure of getting to know the fangtooth. The fangtooth fish shamelessly lives up to its name. Just look at that thing! The fangtooth is carnivorous and feeds on just about anything it can find that gets caught in its sharp-toothed mouth. These fish rely on their contact chemoreception to find prey. In other words, they can sense chemical residue that comes off of other living organisms in the deep sea. This is because they don't have any light-producing cells on their bodies, unlike many other deep sea fish. On top of all that, it's pretty dark down there, so whatever crosses their path, they chomp on. While these guys look pretty scary, they're not a threat to humans. They only grow about 7 inches long. Even so, I wouldn't want to run into one of these things during a relaxing swim in the ocean. The Dunkel Osteus Strangely enough, this prehistoric fish, known as the T-Rex of the seas, had no teeth. Those were replaced with bony plates that allowed it to have the strongest bite among other monsters of its size. The Goblin Shark if you thought the movies about sharks were scary, this next deep sea creature will make you swear off going for dips in the ocean forever. However, it lives 3,000 feet underwater, so you'll never likely see it face to face. The goblin shark looks like a cross between a shark and a creature from your worst nightmare. These sharks boast a protruding sword-like snout with a jaw that juts out to match. Unlike other sharks that have more of a gray hue, this creepy thing looks not so pretty in pink. Aside from their scary demeanor, what do scientists really know about the goblin shark? Well, not much, except that they can grow up to 18 feet in length. Looks like there's still a lot to learn about these guys, if you dare to. By the way, did you know that sharks don't sleep? Many species have to keep water moving over their gills to get oxygen so they can't fall into a deep sleep like we do. That's why they stay half awake during rest. Typically, sharks don't even close their eyes. The Cookie Cutter Shark This shark is a living horror, with lower teeth being big and sharp, while the upper ones are much smaller. When its teeth fall off, the shark eats them to maintain calcium levels. Pretty smart solution for a shark. 
the frilled shark. Studying the frilled shark is like looking through a portal back to prehistoric times. That's because scientists think that these eel-like sharks haven't changed much since their oldest ancestors roamed the deep sea waters, so they're sometimes referred to as living fossils. These sharks' mouths are filled with a terrifying 25 rows of backward-facing sharp teeth, 300 in total. They're designed to grasp prey and hold them tight so they can't get away, according to early studies of the shark conducted in 1884 and published in the Bulletin of the Essex Institute. Luckily for swimmers, the frilled sharks live between 390 feet and 4,200 feet below the ocean's surface, so they'll probably never run into them. Probably. This is probably the worst nightmare of any dentist. The Northern Stargazer Take a look at this cutie. The Northern Stargazer is definitely not something you'd wish to see on the ocean floor. This horrid creature hides its body under the sand leaving its face above to wait for prey. The Tasseled Wobegong Here's another carpet shark on our list. It lies low on the bottom of the sea and patiently waits for its prey to come by. The Australian Ghost Shark The Australian Ghost Shark isn't really even a shark, but a very bony fish. It's also a living fossil. It hasn't changed within the last 400 million years. Believe it or not, sharks and humans have a common ancestor that lived around 440 million years ago. Even though we both evolved in our own way, there are still some signs of that connection. For example, the genome of an elephant shark is very similar to humans. The Leo Pluridon. This list of terrifying creatures would be incomplete without mentioning the terrifying and prehistoric Leopluridon. This carnivorous marine reptile existed during the Colovian stage of the Middle Jurassic era and ruled the waters at 9 feet in length. Scientists believe Leopluridon thrived in this deep sea trench because of its ability to swim long distances and its four paddle-like limbs. While they probably weren't able to propel themselves toward prey like other animals of the area, they did manage to accelerate and attack very ruthlessly and efficiently. Additionally, they relied on their long snouts to smell prey, which leads scientists to believe they didn't rely on sight for hunting. This means they could have thrived in the dark Mariana Trench. Around 150 million years ago, Leopluridon became extinct due to competition for prey against other thriving marine reptiles. And I think I speak for all of us when I say thank goodness for that. Considering that scientists have only explored 5% of the ocean floor and found some of the scariest sea creatures imaginable, one can only dream of what other animals reside in the deep sea waters. Perhaps it's best to keep them in your imagination. Am I right? The Megamouth Shark this shark is a filter feeder, and it's friendly to humans, although its huge mouth can look quite threatening. Like basking sharks, it swims with its mouth constantly wide open, as if it were on Twitter. The Gulper Eel This deep-sea eel has an easily distended belly that allows it to swallow prey twice its size in a single monstrous bite. They have very unusual jaw shapes and can reach about 2 to 3 feet in length. Do you see that large log near the ocean floor? Maybe it's part of an old ship. Treasure, gold, diamonds, I'm rich! Well, as you get closer, you notice something. It's swimming! It's not a shark or a dolphin. It's a saltwater crocodile! Now don't panic. If you bump into one of these reptiles in the sea, it's unlikely it'll think of you as food. Crocodiles have a special valve in their throat that stops them from drowning underwater. But that doesn't mean they can't bite. Usually, they're heading to a nearby island, and the quickest way there is to body surf. They can't really take the ferry, you know. Watching one from a distance should be okay. Just don't swim to shore right away. They love to ambush their lunch in shallow water. 
If there's one time I'd want to see a great white shark, it's when I'm diving with crocodiles. They'll gladly take a crocodile-sized nibble, given the right motivation. Hey, let's take a deep dive into ocean waters to see which of these creepy-looking animals are our friends. We're swimming in the tropical waters of Nanina Balava Island near Fiji. Can you see those giant creatures the size of a Volkswagen Beetle? Those are manta rays. They've got a long whip-like tail and large flat diamond bodies. There are two species of manta rays, the reef manta ray and the giant manta ray. They belong to the same family as sharks, but they only have small teeth in their lower jaw. They feed on zooplankton, tiny fish, and crustaceans. Manta rays are social animals, and they like people. Once you let them come close to you, they'll swim around you to observe you. Don't chase them, though, because they're super fast swimmers. Their name translates to cloak or blanket, and out of all sea creatures, they've got the largest brain compared to body weight ratio. These fellas can recognize themselves in a mirror. The Asian sheep's head wrasse follows. Even if it seems unsightly, it's one of the friendliest fish you'll come across in the shallow waters of Japan, China, and Korea. It has protrusions on both his jaw and head. It likes to hide in its anemone, and it's usually scared to go out even at 40 inches long. One of these fellows developed a friendship with a Japanese scuba diver 30 years ago. When the diver found the fish, it was injured, and he helped it recover. The diver had been the caretaker of an underwater Shinto shrine. He calls the fish by hitting the underwater bell. Time to go swimming with the largest fish in the world, the whale shark. Though these creatures are sharks, they have a lot in common with whales. They can live for 100 years, though they've got tiny brains. They're indifferent to humans. These fellows don't care about anything they can't eat. And unlike other shark species, they won't bite you. Whale sharks are filter feeders. They do have teeth, 3,000 of them, but they don't use them. They've got a massive mouth, like me. But their throat is only the size of a quarter. Next, we have the sunfish. A fish without a tail that looks like it's been cut in half. It has large fins, and when you see it breaching on the surface, you'll think a shark is approaching. The sunfish dives deep in the water to let other fish exfoliate his skin and remove parasites. Once they're done, it returns to the surface to sunbathe. It's also a voracious eater. If it sees you in the waters, it'll likely approach you and observe you. Within a day, you'll be able to feed it from the palm of your hand. Time for the animal that looks like it's always smiling, the bottlenose dolphin. It's one of the most social sea creatures, and it travels in groups. It enjoys playing, hunting, raising calves, and helping out its community. Bottlenose dolphins are excellent swimmers, with speeds reaching 19 miles per hour. They usually come up to the surface to breathe air through the blowhole on their head. These creatures are great communicators, and they send messages to each other. They use echolocation to navigate and find food. When they spot people, they become very friendly, so much that they let their guard down, and it makes them vulnerable to other sea creatures such as sharks. Heading to the Pacific coast, we'll come across some gray whales. Their skin is covered with parasites and other organisms that make their snouts look like rough pieces of rock. We gotta get on their nice side first. Gray whales can attack a large boat, a ship, or a vessel if they sense their calves are in danger. But generally, they're friendly and appear unbothered by rowing kayakers. In some cases, they'll approach small boats and allow humans to touch them, though you're required by law to keep your distance. If it wants to get closer, it will. If it feels threatened, it will act aggressively. Now, let me show you a fish with a tool on its head, the hammerhead shark. Their skull helps them with hunting. Their eyes are placed on the hammer's outer edges and gives them a 360-degree vertical view. But they've got a blind spot in front of their nose. Their heads are like metal detectors. Most of what they want is below the sand surface. So they lightly dip their heads in the sand and sweep up whatever is under there. You'll see them in temperate and tropical waters, both near the shorelines and offshore. They usually move in groups. 
They're mostly harmless to humans and divers, but there have been a few occasions where they got aggressive. But before they do, they'll give you a bunch of warning signs, and divers know how to handle them. Now, I'll show you something kind of smaller, the sea lion. These creatures are a bit tricky. They're playful, aggressive, arrogant, smart, and above all, curious. Sea lions can't breathe underwater, but they can dive almost a thousand feet deep, and they can hold their breath for a long time. They take in air through their nose, and once they dip their heads in the waters, their nostrils slam shut. If they spot humans at the beach, they'll stay away and wait for them to leave. Wild sea lions aren't the friendliest to anyone, especially if they feel threatened. The approachable ones have been trained in captivity. Beluga whales are next. They're white with bulgy heads, and they're amongst the most social and loudest you'll ever meet. Their upwards-facing mouths make them look like they're smiling. When beluga whales are born, they're a dark gray shade. It takes 8 years for their skin to turn white. They can change the shape of their heads by blowing air around their sinuses. Beluga whales love humans. Once they make human friends, they don't want to leave. Even though they're wild animals, they become too entrusting with people. Marine biologists suggest staying away for their safety. Have you heard of sea cows? Those are actually called manatees. You'll see some in rivers and others in the ocean. Even though they're large, they usually stay in shallow coastal areas, munching on seagrass, leaves, and algae. Manatees bring their heads to the surface every four minutes or so to breathe. But they can hold their breath longer than that. They're slow travelers, and even if they aren't as smart as dolphins, they can understand colors. These fellas are gentle giants, and they like to approach humans searching for warmth. Next, we've got the basking shark, the second largest shark in the world. Their mouth is their most impressive feature, like me, since it can open more than 3 feet wide. Okay, you win. These creatures have an intimidating appearance. But despite their size, they're harmless to humans, and divers swim with them. They're very social and can form schools of 100 individuals. They swim near the water surface, filter feeding on plankton. They too have a bunch of teeth that they don't use. Do you know which creature can sing loud songs for 30 minutes? I know, Barry Manatee! Hmm, that might be before your time. <laughs> Actually, it's the humpback whale. Scientists aren't sure why they make those low howls and noises. They might be trying to communicate with others to attract mates. You'll see them near coastlines, feeding on tiny food. And they use their flukes to propel through the water. Humpback whales are less friendly than gray whales because they're very cautious. But they're the heroes of the ocean. They try to save other animals from orcas. And experts say they're capable of decision-making and problem-solving. On one occasion, a humpback whale jumped in to save a whale biologist from a tiger shark. Now, let's try to spot the expert in disguise, the Caribbean Reef Octopus. The specialized color cells help it blend in with the sand and ocean rock's rough texture. But Caribbean Reef Octopuses are loners, and they like to get around on their own. This creature is also teeny tiny. It can grow almost 5 inches and with their legs getting as long as the average person's foot. If you get too close to them, they'll likely turn blue and warn you that they feel threatened. Even though they're trusting, it's better to keep your distance to keep them calm. A weird-looking creature walks around like a living vacuum cleaner down in the ocean's pitch-black depths. I'm talking about sea pigs. They got their name from their pinkish bodies, and they fit in the palm of your hand. These creatures don't swim, they walk around on the seafloor. Their legs consist of 5 to 7 pairs of enlarged tube feet, and they have tentacles around their mouths to fiddle through the mud to find scum to munch on. Yumbo! Since they're vulnerable, they have poisonous skin for protection against other sea creatures. If you encounter one, it'll be quite friendly, but if you want to keep it as a pet, you'll need a very deep tank. Speaking of slimy water creatures, let's talk about comb jellies. They're friendly animals that like to swim close to the shore on warm summer evenings. There are two types of comb jellies, some with two tentacles and some without any. You can spot them at night since they glow in the dark and light up the waters. 
One of them is the sea gooseberry. On the sand, it looks like a transparent blob of jello, and it can fit into a teaspoon. Unlike jellyfish, comb jellies don't stink because they don't have stinging cells, and they're safe to swim with. The sky is burning. The world's oceans are foaming. Thunder and lightning are shaking the air. Two of the most terrible and powerful monsters collide in a duel. A harbinger of the end of the world. Just the sight of this monster can drive anyone mad. Great and atrocious Cthulhu. And the biggest squid on the planet is fighting against it. A beast that knows no fear because it's fear itself. The cause of a thousand shipwrecks, the mighty and hideous Kraken. Let the most epic fight in the history of the universe begin. You're on a fishing boat sailing in a calm ocean. The water is crystal clear and there's no wind. The sea merges with the horizon. The land isn't visible and you feel free. You look over the side of the boat and notice something strange in the water. You're floating in the center of a huge black spot, surrounded by a wide field of green. What's that? Oil spilled into the water that took on such a strange hue? Then why is it so perfectly round? Suddenly, you realize what it is, and the blood freezes in your veins. The black circle is the pupil in the center of a huge green eye. The thing that's looking right at you from the water right now is so big that your ship looks like a speck next to it. It's the Kraken. But don't worry. The monster isn't interested in a small prey like you. The Kraken has been sinking ships for centuries and never met any decent resistance. There are thousands of boats lying on the sea floor. But what's the point? The Kraken longs for a real challenge but can't find it. The largest mammal on Earth is the blue whale, which is no more than a pet goldfish for the kraken. Even a megalodon could easily lose to the tentacled beast in battle. Maybe look for some great monster on the bottom of the Mariana Trench? No, the pressure is too high, and there's almost nothing living there. But then, the kraken has an idea. It goes to the most remote place on Earth, A place rarely visited and poorly explored. This place is called Point Nemo. Here, deep below the ocean surface, lies the ancient city of Relia, built long before the appearance of humans. And amidst the slumbering ruins, the huge and powerful Cthulhu is dreaming. This ancient demigod has been resting here for hundreds of millennia. All this time, Cthulhu has been waiting for its hour to wreak havoc on Earth. It's sleeping, but even in its dreams, Cthulhu communicates with members of its very own cult following. It uses telepathy to get into their minds and make them do atrocious things. But all of a sudden, Cthulhu's slumber is interrupted. Who dares wake it so rudely? Cthulhu opens its angry red eyes, overgrown with seaweed, and sees a huge squid in front of it. The Kraken has finally found a worthy opponent. Immediately, it pounces on Cthulhu and wraps its tentacles around the monster's head. The fight begins. Cthulhu heavily pushes off from the sea floor and rushes to the surface, dragging the Kraken with it. Two giant monsters, larger than the tallest skyscrapers, emerge from the water. The sea is raging, and clouds are gathering over the battlefield. Enraged, Cthulhu strikes at the Kraken, but it doesn't seem to feel anything. Lightning flashes in the black and churning clouds. Cthulhu tries to tear the Kraken off itself, but the squid's tentacles firmly grasp the green monster. Meanwhile, You're on your way to Point Nemo to watch the battle unfold. You need to sail from the coast of Chile, and strange things are happening there right now. Hundreds of sailors are climbing on board dozens of ships. There are ordinary fishing vessels, as well as heavily armed and loaded Navy ships. And when you ask anyone where all these people are going, they all give you a dark look and answer, 
into eternity. The Kraken is taking the upper hand, and Cthulhu calls its followers to help. It hopes the ships will be able to help defeat the enemy, but it'll be two days before the first of them arrive from land. Cthulhu finally tears off the Kraken and throws it into the water. The squid attacks again, but Cthulhu grabs it by the tentacles and lifts it above its head. Lightning strikes the Kraken, but it's no more than a spark to the giant monster. At the same time, the entranced sailors stand on decks and look in the direction of the battlefield. At night, they fall asleep and see the same dream about the ancient city of Relia. In the center of it, there's a twisted chapel, and inside, Cthulhu sits on its throne, calling its followers. Day and night and day, the monsters have been fighting each other with their last strength. And at last, tiny dots gather around them. The ships have arrived. They're ready to attack the Kraken, and Cthulhu gives them a mental order. But the Kraken has its own ace up its sleeve. It hadn't been sinking ships just for fun. Very often, it saved thousands of marine creatures caught in fishing nets. And now, they and their offspring from all over the ocean come to help the Kraken. Huge octopuses, blue whales, great white sharks, electric eels. They're all attacking enemy ships. Whales are ramming the submarines, and eels are turning vehicle engines off with their electric discharges. Suddenly, the Kraken dives under the water. Did it give up? Got scared? Not likely. Cthulhu looks out into the ocean and waits for the squid to attack. The Kraken swims beneath the fighting people and fish. It starts twisting its tentacles, creating a huge whirlpool. The ships are doomed now, and Cthulhu can only rely on itself. The Kraken is a powerful creature, but it's an animal after all. While Cthulhu is incredibly intelligent, albeit malevolent, it understands that the Kraken is a sea monster and can be defeated once on land. Cthulhu's roar shakes the skies. Lightning bolts strike the ocean. The water is boiling. The ancient city of Relia is rising from the bottom of the sea. The Kraken can't escape here. It needs water. The squid fights Cthulhu with the last of its strength, but without its element, it quickly loses. Cthulhu is victorious. Now, being woken, it's going to destroy the rest of the world, as was foretold. But the fight couldn't have gone unnoticed. Thanks to satellite data, the world already knows what's happened. And a plan has been devised to put down the ancient monster in case it wins. Fighter jets enter the scene and attack Cthulhu. The monster raises its arms to the sky. Clouds are gathering around it. An electric discharge sparkles in the clouds, and electricity disappears within a few hundred miles, including the electronics on board the jets. They're falling down into the water. There's no way to defeat the mythic beast. But what is it? Satellites are suddenly falling from the sky in dozens. Cthulhu didn't know that Point Nemo is the dumping ground for space debris. Since this is the farthest point from Earth, it's safe to drop idle satellites here. Right now, hundreds of them are falling on the ancient city and bombarding the monster. Disoriented by the sudden assault, Cthulhu retreats back underwater along with its city. Then and there, it decides to go back to sleep for another thousand years and wait for a perfect moment to ruin the world. Cthulhu's mind-controlling ability made all the witnesses of the battle forget what they saw. Humanity is again unaware of the dangers from the depths. Cthulhu doesn't want people to be ready for its awakening. If you enter these coordinates in the GPS, you'll see where Point Nemo is. In 1997, oceanographers recorded a mysterious sound from the depths of the sea. It was called the Bloop and can be easily found on the internet. This event led many people to believe in the existence of Cthulhu, but the panic didn't last long. It turned out that the bloop was the sound of a glacier splitting. Or maybe it's Cthulhu that made people think that way. Who knows? 
The deeper you go, the creepier they get. You're about to travel to the darkest ocean depths and check whether this claim is true. Are the creatures living there as scary as people think? You go 120 feet down underwater. Pay close attention to the bottom under your flippers. Oh my, what's that terrifying face half hidden in the sand? That's the Northern Stargazer. You can meet this fish in the eastern United States. It buries itself in the sand until unsuspecting prey gets near. Then, the nightmarish creature electrically shocks the poor animal and dines on it. You are moving deeper to 240 feet under the surface. That's where you spot a colorful, puffy creature, no more than one foot long. It's the sarcastic fringe head. At first, the fish seems to be harmless. Ha! Huh. Only unless it's provoked. When this animal is agitated, it opens its huge, huge mouth to fend off predators. This defense tactic is a sight to behold, both surprising and frightening. Luckily, the fish is no threat to people whatsoever. The creature you see next can comfortably live in shallow waters, but you meet it at a depth of 900 feet. You don't even need to wonder why the animal's called the Game of Thrones Brittle Star. Unlike starfish that slowly crawl across the seabed, this creature moves fast. It wriggles its long, flexible arms to get from point A to point B. Its body is protected by a hard calcium carbonate shell. Also called snake stars, these creatures are tiny and easily fit in nooks, cracks, and small crevices in rocks. At a much greater depth of 2,000 feet, you come across the giant squid. For a long time, it was thought to be a creature from legends rather than a real animal. The giant squid was first caught on camera in 2001, and it's exactly as big as its name implies. The creature's eyeballs are the size of soccer balls, and the squid itself can weigh up to 600 pounds. Almost 3,000 feet below the surface, you get spooked by another creepy-looking animal. It's somewhat red and rather small, no longer than one foot long. As you approach the creature, it looks rather docile, or maybe just indifferent. The vampire squid, that's the animal's name, looks like an umbrella with tentacles. It doesn't even produce ink, so you leave it alone. Soon after that, at a depth of 3,200 feet, you meet the cookie cutter shark. This creature is a parasite. It attaches itself to big fishes, dolphins, whales, and sometimes even people. Then, using its neatly arranged serrated teeth, it gouges out cookie-sized pieces of meat. This nasty glowing animal doesn't grow larger than 20 inches and lives in the ocean twilight zone. At a depth of 3,300 feet, the light becomes a rare and valuable thing. The animals living that far away from the surface have to evolve unusual features to survive. That's how the barrel eye fish ended up with a transparent head and two super sensitive barrel shaped eyes. Right now, pretty much like always, they're pointed upward, allowing the fish to see potential prey and you. Almost 4,000 feet below the surface, you see something droopy and saggy. The blobfish doesn't have a skeleton or any muscle. Its jelly-like flesh lets the creature survive incredible water pressure. Despite its appearance, the blobfish is an ambush predator. It usually lies very still on the bottom, waiting for unsuspecting prey to swim by. You go a bit deeper and spot a creature that looks particularly ghastly. The goblin shark senses prey with its snout. The creature's terrifying jaws are attached to elastic ligaments. When some animal comes too close, the shark catapults its mouth forward to catch it. If your mouth could do the same, you would be able to eat things dangling seven inches away from your face. Even deeper than that, at 5,000 feet, you notice another member of the shark family. The frilled shark looks like an overgrown eel, but its gills are lined with red fringe at the edges. Hence the name. The creature's horrifying mouth has 25 rows of razor-sharp backward-facing teeth, 300 in total. The shark prefers to hover in the water, waiting for its prey to come closer. Then, it charges at it like a snake. Suddenly, you see something glow brightly like an electric bulb. But after coming closer, you recoil in horror. 
The creature looks like an upgraded eel equipped with oversized teeth. That's the deep sea dragonfish that can live at a depth of 6,000 feet. Chemical processes going on inside the fish's body produce an eerie red glow. This glow is used to communicate with other fish. At the same depth, you meet another deep sea inhabitant. Its most prominent feature is its huge mouth. Thanks to it, the gulper eel can swallow its prey whole. Its stomach can expand to a terrifying size when it needs to fit something large. At a depth of 6,600 feet, you come across an angry-looking creature with a fishing rod over its head. It's the deep-sea anglerfish. The animal has an unusual dorsal spine, even though it's worn only by females. It protrudes above their mouth and has a lure on its tip, some luminous flesh that baits prey. The anglerfish has such a big mouth and its body is so pliable that it can swallow animals twice its own size. You're 7,000 feet down when you see another fish that's glowing in the dark. The black dragonfish is a sly creature. It has its light-producing organs arranged along its belly. The spooky creature also has gleaming flashlights next to its eyes. They help the animal find prey and attract potential mates. At the same depth, you also spot an enormous pill bug. But unlike the critter you can find in your garden, this one is at least 20 inches long. That's the giant isopod, and it is, indeed, related to the roly-poly, as well as crabs and shrimps. These creatures may look somewhat scary, but they're harmless. They feast on other deep-sea animals only after those have passed away. At a depth of 13,000 feet, you notice the ocean floor has become a bit… fluffy? That's because it's covered with zombie worms. These creatures rarely grow to be more than two inches long. And still, they can break down fairly large animals, so strong the acid they produce is. The worm's feathery appearance makes them look like plants. But the truth is, these creatures munch on rock-hard bones of the world's largest animals, such as whales. The grid-eye fish almost scares you out of your mind soon after that. This creature has a pair of large greenish oval plates on the top of its head and no eyes whatsoever. Experts believe that these bony membranes detect light coming from predators, saving the fish's life. You're now three miles down below the surface, and that's where you spot something bizarre on the bottom. It's definitely a fish, but it's standing on the ocean floor on three long, rigid legs. Ah, it's the tripod fish. Curious rather than scary. This creature has adapted to the almost complete darkness by giving up on its vision. It has to rely on vibration and touch to sense prey. And then, the fish uses its fins as hands to transport food directly into its mouth. You don't have time to go any deeper before you spot the faceless fish. This slightly off-putting creature has no eyes, and its mouth, smiling a Mona Lisa smile, is underneath its body. For the first time, the faceless cusk, which is the creature's official name, was seen more than a century ago. The next time it happened was only in 2017. Once you've reached a depth of six miles below the surface, you see deep sea cucumbers. These bizarre creatures are much bigger than their shallow water relatives. They spend most of their time on the sea floor. But if they need to escape predators, they are able to swim away. Deep sea cucumbers have bright purplish coloring, tiny feet, and tentacles that surround their mouths. Mmm, cute. The question is, why do these deep-sea creatures look so scary? Life is very different there, at the bottom. Tremendous water pressure, a lack of food, and constant darkness. You have to adapt to survive in such extreme conditions. Now, if you step on a sea urchin, you're gonna know right away. <laughs> look at those spikes. Get the point? <laughs> Ow! While they're not aggressive, they've got a great defense going against any creatures that want to eat them. Venomous spikes and a poisonous bite. Eh, pick your poison, literally. They live in all of the oceans of the world, so avoiding them is out of the question. They mostly hang out in shallow water, hiding in rock pools and reefs, so unmindful people step on them a lot. The long, venomous spikes of the urchin look like needles. Feel like them, too. They can go in quite deep, Plus, they release a strong toxin. 
The cure? Remove the spikes quickly and wash with salt water. One small marine mammal just loves sea urchins. Any guesses? It's the sea otter. Don't let its cuteness get in the way of its toughness. Mm. These mammals rarely leave the water, and that even includes taking naps. Holding hands with other otters keeps them from floating away from the pack. Their fur is the densest on the planet, up to a million hairs per square inch. Hey, we humans only have about 2,000. They're also good with tools. They can use rocks to hammer open shells. Hey, how else would you open a sea urchin? You ought to try it sometime. <laughs> Stonefish aren't going to win any beauty contest unless the pageant is for best rock lookalike. Their tiny, unreflective eyes and rough skin blend in perfectly with their environment. A large head, an even bigger mouth, and a home full of… yeah, it's rocks. And just because you're on the beach doesn't mean you're safe. Stonefish can survive for 24 hours out of the water. Stepping on one or even handling one won't be that fun. Their dorsal fin spines have extremely strong venom. It shoots out when they get stepped on and it can lead to paralysis or even heart failure. You'll need help fast! No wonder they're one of the most dangerous creatures in the water or anywhere. Be careful when scrambling around rocky areas. They love to play hide and seek. Box jellyfish tentacles grow up to 10 feet long, and each tentacle has 5,000 stinging cells. Not bad for a creature that's mostly just water. Their venom is strong enough to paralyze anything they want to eat. Now, if you happen to get stung, it's going to hurt. A lot! Its toxins contain proteins that affect the heart, skin cells, and even our nervous system. No wonder it's considered one of the most dangerous creatures on the planet. I wouldn't recommend using sunscreen, soda, coffee, or other older methods. They don't work. Your best bet is some good old-fashioned seawater. Looks like jellyfish are the rulers of the ocean, not sharks. Hey, look around your local rock pool. You might see this sweet little octopus. It's tiny and has blue rings. Cute! But don't fall for it now. This octopus wouldn't make a good pet. When provoked, the octopus will start flashing neon blue to warn everyone to stay away. And I highly recommend you do just that. Their venom is a thousand times more dangerous than cyanide. There's also no known antidote for it. The best thing to do? Take a quick picture and walk away. Better yet, just walk away. Now, not even the octopuses are normal down under. I'll stick with my shrimp on the bar if you may. Do you see that large log near the ocean floor? Maybe it's part of an old ship, a treasure, gold, diamonds. Hey, I'm rich! As you get closer, you notice something. It's swimming! It's not a shark or a dolphin. It's a saltwater crocodile. Now, don't panic. If you bump into one of these reptiles in the sea, it's unlikely it'll think of you as food. Crocodiles have a special valve in their throat that stops them from drowning underwater. But that doesn't mean they can't bite. Usually, they're heading to a nearby island, and the quickest way there is to body surf. They can't really take the ferry. Watching one from a distance should be okay. Just don't swim to shore right away. They love to ambush their lunch in the shallow water. If there's one time I'd like to see a great white shark, it's when I'm diving with crocodiles. They'll gladly take a crocodile-sized nibble, given the right motivation. Going out on a boat off the coast of Mexico sounds like the perfect vacation. The sun, the blue water, the most endangered sea creature… Wait, what? The vaquita isn't dangerous, but don't expect it to stick around to say hello or sign any autographs. It's incredibly shy. This little cow, that's what the Spanish means, is one tiny sea mammal. With those black markings around its eyes, it looks more like a sea panda to me. Seeing one should make you feel very special. They're on the brink of extinction, mostly because they get caught up by accident in fishing nets. It's estimated that there are only 10 left in the wild. The Galapagos Islands are legendary. Giant tortoises, blue-footed bobbies, Sally Lightfoot crabs, and red-lipped batfish. But if you've ever swum around there, you might have seen something really unexpected in the water. Iguanas! Everywhere! These large marine reptiles eat the algae that grow on underwater rocks. They're strictly vegetarians. Yeah, I'll bet the fish are happy about that. 
A long, flat tail designed for swimming helps them move around, and sharp claws keep them on the rocks for their daily sunbathing sessions. But watch them closely. They sneeze a lot. They haven't got a cold or anything. They're sneezing out salt. A special gland keeps the salt out of their nose, and they've got to get rid of it somehow. Ooh, sounds painful. What's cool is that they don't mind us in the water with them. Because the islands have been so isolated, the creatures here aren't afraid of humans. Now, if picking up shells on the beach is something you like doing, make sure the shell you collect doesn't already have an owner. Snails are everywhere in this world, and they're mostly harmless to the touch. But there's always one, ruining it for everybody. Trust me, the cone snail is nothing like its land-based brothers. It's not vegetarian. There are over 500 species of this venomous sea creature, with a few that can really hurt you. These little snails are extremely vicious. They inject their venom through a harpoon-like tooth, and they don't even floss. They're capable of paralysis, blindness, lung failure, and even worse. Best give some respect to your backyard snails. You don't want them calling this thing in as a backup. Want to high-five a sea creature? Well, put your flipper, I mean hand, up for the Tasmanian red handfish. This fish doesn't swim like a fish, it walks. It uses its flipper-like hands to stroll around on the ocean floor. These bottom walkers are disturbed by swimmers and boats a lot. Some people even want to take them home as pets. I think it's better to just give them a wave and swim on by. If you think starfish love getting their photo taken, does that mean you can communicate with starfish? If you could, this one would ask you to leave it alone. It's always grumpy. Unlike its washed-up relatives on the seashore, the crown of thorn starfish is large and dangerous. These creatures occur naturally on coral, like the Great Barrier Reef. Their venom's terrifying, even for humans. This sea creature is covered in poisonous spines that cause intense and immediate pain. It can last longer than three hours. So what happens if you rub one of these things the wrong way? Nausea and vomiting. Not exactly ideal for getting that perfect Instagram pic. Pufferfish may look small and cute, but handle them wrong and it's game over. They're a huge hit at underwater birthday parties the world over. They can turn themselves into balloons. Funnily enough, not all pufferfish are venomous with sharp spikes. Some are smooth and adorable. But the nasty ones have a highly toxic substance inside their body. Which is weird, because you could pay up to 50 bucks for it at a restaurant. You ever heard of the Japanese delicacy fugu? It's venomous pufferfish on a plate. Young chefs spend years training to prepare it. But one wrong cut, and you can bet that customer won't be coming back. Ever. Sharks are the only animal immune to pufferfish toxin. Great. Another thing that makes sharks awesome. The Kraken is a colossal squid, a legendary sea monster, the biggest hunk of calamari you ever saw. And if this monster had existed, the world would have changed beyond recognition. The Kraken has powerful tentacles, solid muscles with suckers at the end. They're just impossible to escape. The Kraken can break a ship in half or just pull it down into the depths. But the worst thing about the Kraken is its size. According to old sailor stories, the Kraken reached 5,000 feet in length. That's almost 10 soccer fields. Hey, maybe the Kraken could play soccer. The Kraken legend said the monster was so giant that sailors mistook it for a small island. In past centuries, it would have been impossible to defeat such a beast. If the Kraken existed in reality, it might have had offspring. Yeah, in all the world's oceans, there would be giant monsters that could sink any ship. It's unlikely that the Kraken would have competitors in its habitat, so its population would grow strongly. Since the Kraken is enormous, it would need lots of food, so the population of other large sea animals would fall significantly. Blue whales, great white sharks, other giant squids, all the big sea creatures would be endangered. Many people are starving because of the reduction of large fish in the ocean. Urban economies that rely on fishing will be in decline. Prices for small fish around the world are getting more expensive because it's unsafe to fish. 
To defeat the Kraken, you need powerful weapons, but the monster is tough to catch. The Kraken belongs to the cephalopod genus. This species includes squid and octopus, some of the most intelligent creatures on the planet. The Kraken is a skilled hunter and will never fight in the open. So what can you do? You can't track the Kraken because it approaches from the depths, not the surface. Though you may be able to tell that the monster is somewhere nearby if a lot of fish surface. When the Kraken swims, it scares all the fish in the vicinity. But it might already be too late. A huge tentacle emerges from the water, resembling a high tower. This tower falls on the deck of the ship, shattering it. The sailors scream and run. The Kraken lands a second blow, and the vessel is almost capsized. Next, the Kraken wraps its giant tentacles around the ship and pulls it to the bottom. Oh boy! What if the sailors manage to detach the ship from the tentacles of this monster? With the help of powerful weapons, the ship's crew strikes back. The Kraken retreats under the water. It's hurt, angry. It seems the battle is over, but here comes the worst. A whirlpool forms beside the ship. Thanks to its considerable weight, when the Kraken dives, it creates a whirlpool behind it. Like a drain in a giant bathtub, this whirlpool sucks the ship down. The battle with the Kraken is lost. Well, that was unfortunate. You might be able to defeat the monster if you can anticipate its attack in advance. But the Kraken can see you and your ship before you can see it. Colossal squids live in deep waters, and they have the largest eyes among all animals. The squid's eye is the size of a dinner plate. Thanks to this, they can see their prey from far away. Similarly, a kraken would spot the ship much sooner than sonar could pick up the kraken. It would always have the drop on you. Well, that's not good. Around the world, cargo transportation by ship is declining. Airlines provide the only safe connection between the continents. This will increase air pollution. The most successful enemy of the kraken is submarines. They travel at great depths and are equipped with powerful echolocators to help detect the kraken in advance. Subs are well-armed, too, and the round metal body is not so easy to destroy. A single kraken may be defeated by a submarine, but what if there are several sea monsters? Three kraken can wrap their tentacles around the submarine and drag it deeper into the water where the pressure will destroy their enemy. In other words, they'll have a crush on you. The existence of the Kraken will have dramatically changed the development of many countries. What if Christopher Columbus, on his famous journey, noticed an island that he thought was the New World? He approaches it, but tentacles emerge from the island and sink Columbus's ship. The colonization of North America is delayed, maybe until airplanes are invented. And the first crewed flight wasn't until the 20th century. There would be no Hollywood. There would be no hamburgers, no famous American music playing. There wouldn't be YouTube, which means you wouldn't be watching this video right now. Hmm. Worst of all, the internet wouldn't exist either. And all this because of one stupid monster squid. The Vikings wouldn't sail on their long ships to raid and settle foreign territories. The history of Norway, Sweden, Finland, and other Nordic countries would have changed drastically. Hey, maybe the Titanic wouldn't have hit an iceberg, but a giant sea monster instead. Though, it's unlikely that people would take trips on huge ocean liners in a world where the Kraken exists. Maybe, though, the Kraken isn't all that aggressive. Still, they need a lot of food, and because of the growing population of these monsters, there will be much less food in the ocean. Therefore, the Kraken will increasingly come to the surface for hunting. In the future, the Kraken will migrate closer to the shore. In many countries, people then are not allowed to swim in the ocean. Imagine floating on the waves and a monster the size of a skyscraper is swimming right below you. Relaxing at sea and on the beach will no longer be popular. Many countries that live off tourism become impoverished. When the krakens grow hungrier, they try to capture prey from land. A huge squid could attack small port cities. Houses, docks, streets, everything can be crushed. A tremendous amount of plastic is thrown into the ocean near the coasts of large countries. Billions of tons of plastic will bother the kraken. An angry, hungry monster can attack bridges like the Golden Gate Bridge. Imagine that a huge squid surrounds the bridge and blocks all traffic. 
Some of these squids could break the strong cables with their power, and the entire structure would collapse into the water. Ooh! It's good that the kraken doesn't really exist to swim in our seas and oceans. At least, as far as we know. But could the monster have actually existed? Legends stretch back years, but scientific evidence appeared in the middle of the 19th century. In 1857, a 3-inch diameter squid beak was discovered on the coast of Denmark. Other huge squid remains were found in the Bahamas, and then scientists were convinced that gigantic squids existed. While colossal squid has been officially discovered since then, it's been more than 100 years, and we still don't know what max size they can grow to. The fact is, colossal squids are one of the most elusive creatures on Earth. They live in the depths of the ocean where it's challenging for scientists to reach. Any dive to a greater depth requires powerful, bulky equipment. Underwater bathyscapes and cameras make a lot of noise and light, which squids notice from afar. They flee before we can see them. The legend of the kraken probably appeared because of a real colossal squid. People in the past didn't know about these creatures' existence, so when they saw one for the first time, they described it as a massive, terrible monster. It's difficult to say if these huge squids were the size of a small island, because the truth is, we've only studied about 5% of the ocean. It may be that in its depths, monsters much more terrible than the kraken swim. Like my nephew, Peter. That's right, come on aboard! Please enter the submarine slowly and make yourself comfortable. Today, we're going deep into the dark parts of the ocean for the ultimate showdown, Shonosaurus and Megalodon. Time to see how Shoni and Meg stack up against each other. First round, age. Look at Shoni, the largest marine reptile coming out of nowhere. This marine reptile looks a bit tired since it traveled all night and got here all the way from the late Triassic period, about 215 million years ago. Back then, it was all dinosaurs, plus some crocodiles. Oh look, Meg got here on time too! She looks a bit more fresh and relaxed, probably because she's way younger than her contender. She started her dominance over the ocean 20 million years ago. Will she be able to stay on the throne after this duel? Meg went extinct about two and a half million years ago, or at least we think she did. Only about 5% of the ocean has been explored, so spreading stories about an underwater giant shark is pretty easy. Who knows what's really hiding down there? Even though they're both extinct, dinosaurs like Shoni are way older. Meg's a baby compared to her. Sorry, Meg, one point goes to your older challenger. I bet Shoni's got some awesome stories to tell. Next round, length. Ah, good old Meg. She's the largest shark that ever lived on our planet, around 60 feet long. There aren't any full fossils of her to get a really accurate measurement. Scientists that study modern sharks can guess her length by her epic tooth size. Shoni was a little bit shorter, around 50 feet. She kind of looks like a bigger, bonier version of a dolphin. Dolphins can grow up to 13 feet long. Even the biggest dolphin, the orca, looks tiny. It's only 30 feet long. One point goes to Meg for being huge. And we're tied up at one apiece. Round 3. Teeth Meg was one of the greatest threats in the ocean with teeth similar to those of a modern white shark. Scary, symmetrical, triangular, insanely sharp, and up to 7 inches long. Meg had around 276 teeth in 5 rows. That sounds super scary, but some modern sharks have over 300 teeth. But they're not all ready for action. Some are fully grown, some are still growing up. Sharks' teeth are not that strong, so they fall out a lot, which is not that big a deal like it is for humans. They produce new teeth all the time, so they can replace the ones that get worn down. Get this, Meg probably worked her way through about 40,000 teeth over her lifetime. Shoni, unfortunately, won't be able to defend herself with teeth in this duel, because she doesn't have any. Researchers believe that younger Shonis had teeth because they needed some help getting food and fending off rivals. When they got bigger and older, they didn't need them anymore. Sorry, Shoni, this round isn't even close. Meg takes the lead 2-1. to one. Next round, who can eat more? 
Scientists believe Meg ate around 2,500 pounds of food every day. Her teeth tell us she didn't exactly love the salad bar. With a mouth almost 10 feet wide, Meg had the most powerful bite of all animals on our planet. That way, she didn't have to be too picky. She could munch on bigger ocean animals like whales, giant turtles, seals, or any other marine mammal that got, you know, too close. No wonder she weighed about 140,000 pounds. Because of her lack of teeth, Shoni preferred animals with softer bodies, like smaller fish, squids, that sort of stuff. We don't really know how much she ate every day, but with an approximate weight of around 60,000 pounds, I mean, she's heavier than two sperm whales or three elephants, but still peanuts compared to the mighty Meg. Good for you, Shoni. Keep up the good work with all that soft food. But unfortunately, Meg's eating up the points in this competition. Three to one. You don't really want to mess with someone who can eat a whole whale for breakfast. Round 5. Looks Scientists have reconstructed Meg to look like a bigger, just a little more dangerous version of a white shark. They were so similar that lots of people thought the white shark was Meg's great-great-great-grandkid. But the truth is that they're not related at all. Meg was the last member of a completely different lineage of sharks. She had a shorter nose and a flatter jaw that almost looked like it got squished somehow. Like the blue shark, she had really long pectoral fins to support her size and weight. Shoni looks like a tubby, bit quirky, and way bigger version of a dolphin. She has four flippers and a longer skull. And what's interesting is that she doesn't have a dorsal or sail fin. Shoni can't do any of those cool tricks and maneuvers that dolphins do. That part also probably doesn't help when she meets another hungry dinosaur. She can't dodge out of the way so easily. Still, Shoni's big enough not to have to worry about that kind of stuff. Step aside, Meg. Stop hogging the spotlight. We want to see more of this cute, funny dolphin-like creature. One point for Shoni. She's catching up 3-2. to two. Round 6. Who has a cooler name? Shonasaurus means lizard from the Shoshone Mountains. Why? Because it's a lizard from the Shosh... Uh, you get the picture. Cool name, huh? Megalodon, on the other hand, means large tooth. Yeah. Sorry, Meg, it's one point for Griffith. Wait a minute, wrong video. We're all tied up at 3-3. Three to three. Round 7. Who traveled more? Just like modern sharks, Meg's skeleton isn't made of bone, it's made out of cartilage. That's the stuff your ear and nose are made out of. So no matter how much you look for them, you're never going to find any of Meg's bones. Her only fossils are actually teeth, since they're made of dentin. In her 18 million years of existence, Meg traveled a lot. Her teeth have been found all over the globe. She even went on vacation to tropical and subtropical waters. But the one place she never went was to Antarctica. Shoni was a wanderer too. Her fossils were first found near Las Vegas. No, it's not what you think. She really wasn't all about the parties and shows. Vegas was all underwater back then. She too took long trips along the coast, visited different countries, enjoyed fancy seafood buffets all over the world. Pretty good life overall. Let's give Meg this one for making it to almost every continent. She leads 4-3. to three. Round 8. Who was more popular? Seeing Shoni swim by could easily scare away other sea creatures. She's pretty big after all. But pretty soon, they'd see that this reptile wasn't that dangerous. Okay, squid, small fish, they weren't big fans. But medium-sized water creatures soon figured out they were too big for her. So they could be friends. Except for, you know, the kraken, a colossal squid and legendary sea monster with extremely powerful tentacles. The story goes that the kraken had something to do with the disappearance of some members of Shoni's family. So let's just say they're not exactly BFFs. Meg, introvert, loner. She comes to the party and stays in the corner, not talking to anyone. And there weren't exactly a lot of animals lining up to ask her to dance. It'd probably be their last. When you're that high up in the food chain, you're never going to be too popular. Shoni makes a comeback with the popularity round, and it's all tied up at four. 
Well, that means both of our contestants are going to share the... Wait, Meg looks furious. You can see her gritting her teeth, getting ready to finish this contest once and for all. Shoni smiles peacefully. She's not used to big animals going after her, so she doesn't think Meg would actually do anything crazy. As long as the submarine doesn't get too close. Okay. Wait, Shoni's swimming towards Meg. They're gonna go at it. No, Shoni's telling Meg she can have the prize. Wow, crisis averted. Meg does not like to lose. Shoni, you certainly deserve the pacifist of the Pacific trophy. Uh oh, Meg doesn't look too happy about that. Better strap in, guys. Here we go. Well, hey there. We dive back in time and into the oceans over a half a billion years ago. Just, you know, because we can. Whoa, watch out! It's not megalodon or giant sea reptiles you need to look out for here. It's a bizarre, unearthly-looking creature called Anomalocaris. The name means unlike any other shrimp. And I think you'll agree, it looks like a nightmarish cross between a shrimp and a modern-day centipede. Two tentacles protruding from its face, each lined with razor-sharp teeth. Oh yeah, and this thing was about the size of your leg. With a wave-like movement of the flaps on each side of its body, it was graceful for a terrifying creature. It was also more advanced than any other life on this planet at the time. Especially those huge eyes. You have only one lens in each of yours. This giant shrimp had 16,000. That's four times more than a common housefly. And you know how good their vision is. Good enough to dodge that swatter every time. All this allowed Annie to become one of the first animals on this planet to feed on others. Yep, here it is. Earth's first hunter. Its favorite meal? Trilobites. Hey, try a bite. Those are the ancient ancestors of crabs. Some of their fossils have marks on them in the same shape as the monster shrimp's mouthparts. Terrors of the past like this got to be so giant, thanks to more oxygen in the atmosphere. A perfect example of this, Mega Neuropsis. Imagine a dragonfly. Now, make it as big as a cat, and with a wingspan longer than your arm. Megan, the monster-sized dragonfly, could easily grab other insects or even small animals, and she ruled the air with quick movements. Back then, there were still no large birds or other airborne enemies for this behemoth bug, so it was safe and free to grow as large as this planet would allow. Piranhas of the past were also jumbo-sized. Mega piranha was about three times the size of the river terrors we have today. Its bite force was about the same as a tiger's, and those striped kitties bite down two times harder than lions. That means it probably not only dined on other fish and any land creatures that, you know, got too close to the water, but it could also easily crunch down on large turtles and other unlucky shelled creatures. And fun fact, <laughs> modern-day piranhas bark like dogs when they're about to enter a confrontation. It actually sounds more like a frog's ribbit. But makes you wonder, what did this mega-sized ancient cousin sound like? A bear roaring? How about giant sea scorpions the size of your bed? Go back about 460 million years, and you'd see them swimming under you. And watch out for that tail. Scientists still don't know if these creatures could use it to inject venom like your standard land scorpion. But something tells me I wouldn't want that thing anywhere near me. Then there's this guy, Therizinosaurus. Terry looks sort of like a goose with long arms. Oh, and did I mention this goose dino is about two stories tall and longer than a bus? Yow! Its arms make the T-Rexes look even more bite-sized, each 8 feet long, almost triple the length of T-Rexes. And on the end, razor-sharp claws the size of your whole arm. Now, don't worry about those lengthy claws too much, though. Terry probably used them to cut through giant termite nests. So this huge reptilian goose was more interested in eating bugs and plants. Another mega monster for you? Megatherium. The giant ground sloth could look a giraffe straight in the eye and weighed as much as a hippo. It moved mainly on its hind legs and used its massive tail as support. 
They had huge paws with colossal knife-sized claws. The sloth could use them to defend itself from enemies and to bend tree branches in search of food. But the biggest danger to the giant ground sloth wasn't dinosaurs or saber-toothed tigers. It was our own species. Yep, humans showed up just in time to meet this fellow. And to, um, eat him up. Titanoboa was a terrifying 50-foot snake, as long as the great megalodon itself. It was also more than two times heavier than the heavyweight champion among snakes today, the green anaconda. Crocodiles were a regular on this serpent's menu. Titanoboa could swim three times faster than the fastest Olympic swimmer our species has ever seen. It was quicker and more dangerous in the water than outside it. And don't forget the boa part of its name. This massive snake wasn't venomous. Instead, it liked to squeeze. Remember that giant shrimp from earlier? Well, Opabinia looks like its teeny tiny finger-sized cousin. And instead of two toothy tentacles, this thing had a vacuum hose coming out of its face. On the end of that trunk, what looks like a single crab claw. Add five eyes and a mouth under its head, and you've got a recipe for something not of this planet. Only, it is. This creature used its trunk like an elephant does. Its claw grabbed food from the bottom of the ocean and brought it up to its mouth. This thing is so weird-looking that, apparently, when the scientist who discovered it presented his findings to an audience, they all laughed as if he were joking. Now, a real-life monster, the Tully Monster. From a distance, it looks a bit like Nessie, that long neck and teeth-lined jaws. But get closer, and you'll see it's more like a long nose with a mouth attached at the end, like a mosquito. Its eyes are further back, sticking out of tubes all snail-like. Tully was an ancient mollusk, about the size of your forearm. It probably dined on jellyfish and shrimp 300 million years ago. Thylacus smilus will put a smile on your face as long as you don't get too close. No, it's not a relative of the saber-toothed tiger. It was a marsupial, making it more related to a kangaroo than anything. And if you compare them to body size, its fangs were actually longer than a saber-toothed tiger's. And they grew continuously. As for that beard on its chin, that's actually all chin. The lower jawbone grew down to a point under the mouth. Those fangs were rooted to the skull, going way back to its eyes. When the mouth was closed, that bony beard protected the long, sharp teeth from breakage. Stagonapolis, not to be confused with Minneapolis, might look like a big crocodile with a squished-in snout, but it was mostly harmless. Its small head and very few teeth meant the reptile didn't have much to work with when protecting itself. That's what all those armored scales were for. And no need for huge fangs or long rows of razor-sharp teeth when you're a plant eater. That beak-like tip on its nose allowed the stag to dig up plants. So, really, this reptile was more like a 10-foot scaly pig than a croc. Basilosaurus was a type of ancient whale that lived on our planet about 45 million years ago. Not quite as long as a blue whale. But this guy was still big enough to munch down on other whales and even sharks. Some people believe these monsters could still exist today. Eyewitnesses claim to have seen a giant sea dragon, and Basilosaurus fits the description. Plus, 90% of our oceans are unexplored. There's plenty of space to hide a sea monster. But scientists haven't found any fossils of this ancient whale younger than 3.7 million years. So, this myth is busted. Stegosaurus is one of the most recognizable dinosaurs that ever lived. It can easily be distinguished by those huge spikes on its tail and the bony plates on its back. It was twice as long as a giraffe and nearly five times heavier. But compared to its body size, it had the world's smallest brain. It was no larger than a dog's. Pelagornis had the largest wingspan of any bird ever discovered. It was twice the size of the largest bird today, the wandering albatross. Such huge wings made it hard for the bird to take off. It could only do so by jumping off cliffs. And when it finally spread its wings, this giant could only go about 40 miles per hour. The fastest bird today can reach speeds five times that. 
450 million years ago, no I wasn't around then, the sea level was higher, coral reefs started to form, the climate on our planet was stable and warm, not even dinosaurs were around yet. The time when bony and jawed fish we know as sharks appeared. They've been dominating the oceans and making other marine creatures flee in fear ever since. Many of them, like great white sharks, have evolved and adjusted to life in the open ocean as hunters with a pretty high position in the food chain. They're less diverse today than before. One of the reasons is the asteroid strike from the age of dinosaurs. After it reduced the number of shark species, only smaller and deepwater kinds that ate primarily fish survived. They started getting bigger over time. Near the surface, sharks such as makos or great white ones develop faster movements and are somewhat between gray and blue to blend in with their surroundings. The epaulet shark can even walk on the land. It can't take a walk on the beach because it can't breathe outside of the water, but it lives on coral flats in shallow tropical waters, so it can walk in kind of a crawling motion. But deep down below, there are mysterious alien-looking, often huge shark species that didn't come to the surface, which is why they didn't need to adjust to the new environment and different conditions. They haven't changed a lot through time, so they're some living fossils. These creatures mostly don't have five gill slits, the most common number, but six or seven. It's because there's less oxygen the deeper you go in the ocean, so they need more gill slits. Sharks on the surface evolved to have fewer gill slits. Six-gill sharks are the most primitive sharks we have today. Their skeletons are like those of ancient extinct sharks, and they can survive only in very deep waters. Like cats, sharks have a layer of reflective cells placed inside their eyes, which helps them see better in the dark deep sea or cloudy waters. Sharks on the surface have big eyes because they evolved to hunt in the sunlight, so they tend to rely on their vision. Those that live in shallow waters have small eyes, so they can protect themselves from the sand. Like some other deep-sea creatures, six-gill sharks also have bigger eyes to take in as much light as possible. They have more light-sensing rods, but don't distinguish colors that well. In the ocean's twilight zone, with the minimum of sunlight, there's a couple of bioluminescent shark species. They don't take in light within their eyes, but produce or re-emit it with their bodies. Their skin or organs have specialized cells that produce a soft blue-green light. Deep-sea creatures that produce their own light do that to attract their prey, deter animals from going after them, or, scientists think, communicate with each other. It can even help them to camouflage. They do it by hiding their silhouettes from animals going after them. They produce enough light to match their surroundings. The biggest luminous underwater creature is the kite fin shark. Found swimming 980 feet below sea level, preying on ground fish or smaller sharks. It can grow almost 6 feet long and lives 3,200 feet below sea level. Deep sea sharks are also bigger than those on the surface. The Greenland shark can grow up to 24 feet long, bigger than a great white. There's a thing called deep sea gigantism. Creatures in nutrient-poor depths of the ocean grow bigger because, that way, they lose less energy as heat. The Greenland shark lives its life in slow motion. It has a slow metabolism and can go very long periods without food. With their slow pace, they evolve to live up to 500 years at depths of 7,200 feet. Sharks in shallow waters catch their prey, relying on agility and speed. But for them, it's easier because there's plenty of food on the surface. Deep sea sharks, with less food and slower life rhythm, had to develop a different style. They're more opportunistic, definitely not picky, and don't care if their future meal is alive or not. Frilled shark, another living fossil from the darkest depths, hasn't evolved much through time. And they're one of the last of their kind, with all of their relatives already gone extinct. It grows up to 7 feet long, primarily hunts on squid, and catches other sharks and fish. It looks like a dinosaur, a snake-like face, a long, smooth, thin body that moves in a serpentine way. It can propel itself with the power of its tail and curl like snakes. They don't swim in a straight line like other sharks. Cookie-cutter shark grows up to 20 inches. It got the name because of the way it feeds, biting off small pieces. It's a parasite creature, which means it feeds off bigger animals but leaves them alive. 
they have sharp teeth and sometimes even swallow those that fall off on purpose. Some researchers think it could be because they live in the depths that are nutrient-poor. If they swallow the teeth, they could recycle calcium and other material from it. Prickly shark is a rare and unusual creature with many thorn-like denticles and two small dorsal fins. It lives mostly in the depths of the Pacific region up to 1,900 feet. Ghost sharks are not even real sharks, but fish closely related to them and rays. They have big pectoral and pelvic fins, two dorsal fins, pretty big eyes, and unlike their cousins, have a single external gill opening. Ghost sharks have slender tails and can grow up to 80 inches, silver to blackish color. They sometimes live in rivers and coastal waters, but also in the depths of the ocean of 8,200 feet or even deeper. They are pretty weak swimmers, so they tend to feed on invertebrates and small fish. Goblin sharks. Swimming through the deep sea, this creepy shark with a flabby body suddenly sees a small, innocent squid. It goes toward it, but the potential snack notices it and quickly starts moving to dart away. It seems like the plan could work at first, but then the shark suddenly thrusts the jaw of its mouth and catches the poor little squid in a second. After the meal is finished, the animal simply fits the jaw back into the mouth and goes away as if nothing happened. This is possible because it has a jaw connected to 3-inch long flaps of skin, which is why it can unfold from the snout. It can grow up to 12 feet long with a weight of 460 pounds. Scientists think goblin sharks are mostly active in the morning and evening. The shark has a long, prominent snout and specific sensing organs on it. It uses them to sense electrical fields in the dark oceanic depths. Seven-gill shark is a big cow shark, brown to silver-gray on top, white underneath, black and white spots, with a thick body, a small dorsal fin, and a wide, blunt snout. It can grow up to 10 feet long, mostly lives in the depth of 1,870 feet, but you can also find it in deep channels and bays. It can be aggressive toward humans if provoked, so don't. Like most deep-sea creatures, it's an opportunistic hunter that's not quite picky but likes to go after dolphins, seals, porpoises, and other marine animals. Megamouth sharks mostly live in the depths of 15,000 feet and spend most of their time in the dark, like me. Scientists discovered it in 1976 because it went near the surface at night to feed on zooplankton. That's the only time these sharks go there. During the day, they return to their quiet, dark, and mysterious depths. They are filter feeders, which means they keep their mouths wide open while swimming, so they filter the planktons they like to eat. There are organs that produce light inside of their mouths, which attracts potential prey, such as pelagic crustaceans. These sharks live in the deep parts of the ocean, but you can rarely find them below almost 2 miles. Scientists think some other, stronger bony fishes outcompeted them. Deep parts of oceans became oxygenated around 70 million years ago, and sharks have been around way longer. But bony fishes adjusted and adapted efficient ways to use oxygen, while sharks were slow with adaptations, so they lost. Also, oceanic depths are way colder, which is challenging for fish and the rest of cold-blooded animals because the speed of their metabolism widely depends upon the external temperature. Think you know what lurks in the depths of the ocean? While nearly 95% of our oceans haven't been explored yet, it's hard not to let your imagination run wild. But thanks to brave explorers, deep sea cameras, and awesome archaeologists, we do know about some pretty incredible sea creatures living in our waters today and millions of years ago. From the 9-foot spider crab to the 60-foot prehistoric megalodon, these sea dwellers come in all shapes and sizes. But let's focus on sea creatures famous for their huge size. Can you guess which living species of whale is the largest? Well, it's not the orca, but that's a good guess. The orca is a toothed whale that can grow to anywhere from 23 feet to 32 feet, which is slightly smaller than a school bus. How about the narwhal? Nope, they're not the biggest either. These unicorns of the sea live mainly in Arctic waters and only grow 13 feet to 20 feet in length. And that's including their 9-foot tusk. Tired of guessing? Okay, I give in. 
The largest whale that still exists today is the blue whale. At a jaw-dropping 82 feet to 105 feet, the blue whale is not only the biggest whale we know of, but is currently the largest animal to have ever lived on Earth. Seriously. These animals are bigger than a T-Rex and even the prehistoric Megalodon. If you were to put a blue whale next to a school bus, it would look like it could swallow it. Think about that. According to National Geographic, a blue whale's tongue can weigh the same as an elephant. And their hearts can weigh as much as a car. That doesn't even sound possible. It's no wonder these giants need to eat about four tons of krill every day. While there aren't too many animals living today that can compete with the blue whale's epic proportions, there is an entirely different species that is a good contender, and it's not quite what you would expect. It's a jellyfish. No, I'm not talking about the little jellyfish that wash up on the shore and ruin a perfectly good day at the beach. I'm referring to the lion's mane jellyfish, the biggest jellyfish around. This invertebrate can grow up to 120 feet long. They also come in different gorgeous colors, like red, purple, or even shades of orange. As if their length wasn't impressive, the lion's mane jellyfish boasts a whopping 8 sets of 70 to 150 tentacles. That means they can have up to 1,200 in total. And here's the giant oceanic manta ray, the largest type of ray in the world. Their wingspan can be longer than a bus. These guys can reach 30 feet in length. They also have the biggest brain compared to body size among all fish. Unlike their stingray cousins, mantas don't have venomous tails. And while the lion's mane jellyfish and the blue whale are yet to be beaten for the longest sea creature, there is one marine creature that can grow even larger in length. The Portuguese Physalia physalis, tentacles and all can reach a length of 165 feet long. And that's according to mentalfloss.com. While this thing may look a lot like a jellyfish, it's actually known as a siphonophore. And there are hundreds and sometimes thousands of them that are genetically identical. Their long tentacles help the organism catch prey. And its sting is fatal to most animals, even humans in some cases. What's even creepier is that if one of the tentacles comes off the organism for whatever reason, it can float around the water for days before decomposing. Even if it's detached, this tentacle can still sting you. But don't go running out of the ocean just yet. Your chances of being hurt by a Portuguese Salia Fasalis sting are pretty slim. However, if you do get stung, the side effects aren't pretty with welts, stomach cramps, an elevated heart rate, and an upset stomach. While you don't want to go anywhere near these long creatures, they sure are pretty to look at. Check out all those colors! The Shastasaurus is the biggest marine reptile that has ever existed. These predators lived during the late Triassic period, about 210 million years ago. These amazing giants could reach lengths of up to 69 feet and weighed more than 75 tons. This made the Shastasaurus as heavy as a blue whale. And if you could stand this creature up vertically, it'd be as tall as a seven-story building. Despite appearances, the Shastasaurus was actually pretty slim for its size. Its ribcage was only six feet across. You'd think that this big guy was chowing down on other dinosaurs, but that's not the case at all. This reptile survived on a diet that consisted of small fish and cephalopods, like octopuses and squids. The Alberto Nectes is a bright representative of the Pleosaur family, meaning that this marine reptile had a small head on an incredibly long neck and large flipper-like limbs that helped it move through the water. These creatures occupied the seas around North America 76 to 70 million years ago. The length of this sea monster could reach 38 feet, with its neck taking up 23 feet of that length. Its neck was a true record breaker. It had a whopping 76 bones in it. No other animal known to humankind has had so many vertebrae in its neck. Scientists aren't sure why they needed such a lengthy neck. They might have used it to collect shellfish off the seabed. Or perhaps it helped them capture their main prey, fish and squids. 
This aquatic reptile also had gastroliths in its stomachs. Some of them were as big as 5.5 inches in diameter. The Tylosaurus belonged to the Mosasaur family. It dominated the shallow seas of North America about 85 to 80 million years ago. This was an enormous predator, with the biggest representatives reaching 45 feet in length. It had a narrow hydrodynamic body with a blunt, powerful head that the animal used to ram and stun its prey. Its body was equipped with agile flippers and a long tail decorated with a maneuverable fin. The Tylosaurus was a carnivore, and its diet included not only fish, turtles, and small sharks, but also other mosasaurs, pleosaurs, and flightless birds. Meet Ophthalmosaurus. This prehistoric reptile thrived during the late Jurassic period and lived in oceans all over the world. Ophthalmosaurus weighed somewhere around 6,000 pounds and grew to approximately 16 feet long, according to NewDinosaurs.com. That's about the same length as the beluga whale that exists today. It's too bad these guys went extinct before we had a chance to see them ourselves, as their cartoonish wide eyes and dolphin-like features are pretty darn cute. Of course, the ophthalmosaurus evolved over time to become ophthalmologists, or eye doctors that we know today. No, that's just a lie. Just testing you. The Mosasaurus is a truly gigantic predator that dominated the seas all over the world about 66 million years ago. According to fossil evidence, some specimens could be more than 50 feet in length. This fact makes the Mosasaurus the biggest marine carnivore of its time. One of the most terrifying things about this creature was its crocodile-like head, decorated with literally hundreds of razor-sharp teeth neatly organized in two rows on both jaws. The thing is that it was pretty challenging for the Mosasaurus to grab its prey in the water. That's why it had all these teeth, plus something special. Pterygoid teeth anchored to the bones on the roof of its mouth. This made hunting and holding onto its prey much easier. The Styxosaurus belonged to the Pleosaur family and lived during the late Cretaceous period, around 85 to 70 million years ago. Upon first glance at this dinosaur, you might mistake it for a sea snake, and it'd be an honest mistake. Styxosauruses were about 35 feet in length, but over 16 feet of that consisted just of their long snake-like neck. They had a comparatively small body and weighed approximately four tons. Their mouths were full of razor-sharp cone-shaped teeth that they used to catch fish. They didn't need to chew their prey, thanks to the 200 small stones called gastroliths in their bellies that probably aided in digestion. At the same time, some scientists believe that the Styxosaurus used these stones to sink to the ocean bottom in search of particular types of fish. Huh, looks kind of like Nessie to me. Do you know how harsh the water around undersea volcanoes is? It is so acidic that some samples even showed it to be at a level between stomach acid and battery acid. This water also contains so many chemicals that are toxic to normal marine creatures and plants. And yet, some species have found a way to live near or inside hydrothermal vents. Like this special type of shrimp. This mysterious creature from the dark depths of the ocean has adapted to grazing bacterial filaments using its small claws, which are similar to garden shears. Hydrothermal vents stemming from the volcano coat the rocky surface which means that all those creatures living down there get something to eat. In fact, undersea volcanoes provide three very important life-sustaining elements in those areas. Minerals, hot water, and bacteria. Whenever there's an open fissure in the ocean floor, water seeps into it. Bacteria living in the crust of our planet then move in and remain in the hot water. The temperature of the water there can go up to 750 degrees. When the fissure erupts and expels the heated water, these bacteria get expelled along with it. There's something else that comes along for the ride. Many nutritious minerals that resided in the rock that has been dissolved by the super hot water. The warmth coming from the vent and the minerals sustain the bacteria and give them the perfect chance to multiply. In many cases, the first sign of life around an underwater volcano is a thick coating of bacteria. 
The bacteria develop stable colonies, which is why other deep sea creatures that inhabit these dark areas use them as food, like these shrimp. They are trying to eat that fast-growing bacteria and at the same time do their best to avoid the hazards of all the volcanic eruptions. The waters surrounding undersea volcanoes are usually too acidic and hot for humans to dive to, even when there is no lava, ash, or steam spewing from the craters. But when a group of researchers took adequate equipment and finally managed to leave their camera in the hot acidic waters for an hour, they had no idea that they were going to find are those sharks? They were hiding in the deep orange murky waters around the Solomon Islands submerged Kavachi. Different shark species, including hammerheads, scalloped hammerheads, and reef sharks. The story gets even better when you realize Kavachi is an active volcano with pretty common eruptions. Apparently, submarine boiling lava and underwater explosions don't scare those sharks at all. It's their home where they feel safe and comfortable. They must have done a great job evolving into this harsh environment over millions and millions of years. So now they can swim through steam and lava without any issue. One of the reasons could be the special pores that they have near their snouts. One of these theories even says if these pores allow sharks to sense changes in the magnetic field of our planet. And sharks need that information for homing and migration. But that also means that they can detect cyclones and hurricanes thus able to skillfully avoid them and similar dangerous situations in time. Back then, scientists also discovered a sleeper shark about 12 miles from the volcano. It's a specific type of shark that usually lives in the northern Atlantic and Pacific, or in some cases even further south near Antarctica and Australia. All right, now let's check out this unusual worm. Don't let its rainbow glow fool you. This mysterious creature is actually a scary predator with jaws you usually see in horror movies. This creep leaves 3,900 feet deep, down on the muddy seafloor near northern New Zealand. A team of researchers took a three-week expedition throughout deep-sea areas in the volcano-rich Kermadec Ridge. This enormous area included 3,800 square miles of canyons, continental slopes, mountains, and hydrothermal vents, parts where undersea volcanoes release gases and hot water. And that's where they found this thing. There are 10,000 species of these worms in the oceans. Most of them have tails and segmented bodies, but they usually look pretty different from one another, depending on the area where they live. There is also a tube worm, which we also call the Pompeii worm. This type lives in hydrothermal vents deep down on the ocean floor. The temperature down there sometimes goes over 140 degrees. Up next, we got a snaggletooth dragonfish. A team of researchers found these tiny critters in underwater volcanoes near the coast of Sydney. It's a black fish with translucent fangs that looks way scarier than most fish you'd see close to the surface because it lives in warm, acidic water near undersea volcanoes. Humans rarely get to see these deep sea fish. All right, how about a lobster? The Europtychus squat lobster lives in depths of up to 4,600 feet, mostly somewhere around deep sea coral. They're called squat lobsters because they look similar to true lobsters, but are flattened in shape from the top and bottom. They don't go around carrying their shell with them, but their carapace is flexible and soft enough so they can squeeze their body into small crevices. When they do this, they leave their long, sharp claws exposed so they can keep unwanted visitors away. It's hard and dangerous to directly go into dark ocean depths and study underwater volcanoes. So researchers came up with a new way to do it. They study deep sea coral. As they develop, the skeletons of black corals contain a record of the noble gases in seawater. This helps scientists collect information on volcanic activity near these corals. Check out these unusual yellowish creatures known as snake stars. Researchers saw them on an undersea peak at a depth of 4,000 feet. They spend most of their time wrapped around coral branches. That's where they can easily capture food particles from the perches around them. Volcanic vents themselves hide some very pretty unusual creatures, such as these small, hairy, red-eyed crabs, too. They live among rocks on the summit of seamounts in dark depths of up to 3,000 feet. There are crabs that leave even deeper than that. 
1.5 miles on the ocean floor near Antarctica. They got their nickname Hoth Crabs because of their hairy chest and are part of a lost world of deep sea creatures that live around volcanic vents at great depths. Big male Hoth Crabs spend most of their time highest on the mineral spires of the vents. That's actually the closest to the hot fluids that go out of them, where smaller male crabs live at the base of the mineral spires. After they get together, females crawl away, looking for the warm fluids that seep from the sea floor. They are rich in minerals, but they can be toxic if they're young, so they need to get far away. This whale, female crabs, move to a safe place and hide from the potential predators, like seven-armed sea stars and big sea anemones. Wow, the cavalcade just never ends, huh? Now these next creatures, the Galapagos snakes, don't live in undersea volcanoes, but it's still fascinating how they've managed to adjust to living on the summits of volcanoes. The Galapagos Islands have 21 volcanoes, and 13 of them are active. It's a unique area with many animal species that you won't find anywhere else on the planet. A wide variety of iguanas, tortoises, lizards, geckos, seals, birds, and sea lions, and snakes that decided to inhabit volcanoes. Also, Alaskan fur seals have been popping up in some unusual locations, like the top of a small island that forms the tip of an active undersea volcano, perhaps? Vents there spew steam, mud, and sulfurous gases. Their surface is covered with huge rocks that exploded out of the vents a couple years ago. This place doesn't look that hospitable, but northern fur seals obviously wouldn't agree. Maybe because there's so much food around this island, like squid and northern smooth tongue, a deep water fish. Because of the ease with which they can gather food, it's much easier for them to take care of their young. And check out this giant woolly rat. It lives in the rainforest that surround the extinct volcano called Mount Basavi. Its crater is 2.5 miles wide. There are high walls around the volcano. And at first glance, it seems like nothing interesting has been going on here, except for some unusual creatures, like this large fluffy animal that kind of looks more like a beaver than a regular rat. It's 32 inches long from nose to tail and weighs 3.5 pounds, and it's one of the largest rats in the world. They have a silver gray coat, and researchers think that they build their nests underground. These rats eat roots and leaves. This extinct volcano is in New Guinea, which is known for its over 70 species of mice and rats. So these woolly rats have obviously adjusted through generations and evolved to live in these unpleasant conditions. Wanna high five a sea creature? Well, put your flipper, I mean hand up, for the Tasmanian red handfish. This fish doesn't swim like a fish. It walks. It uses its flipper-like hands to stroll around on the ocean floor. These bottom walkers are disturbed by swimmers and boats a lot. Some people even want to take them home as pets. I think it's better to just give them a wave and swim on by. The Vampire Squid Its species name is Vampirotuthis infernalis, which translates to Vampire Squid from Hell. Oh yes, this vampire squid means to terrify everyone with its name. Its dark red color, its spikes at the bottom, and the scary fact that it can basically turn itself inside out. The vampire squid loves putting on a good show, but it's as harmless as a kitten is to humans. It's as if Dracula scared the pants off you, but he didn't have blood-sucking fangs. The vampire squid feeds on food particles from plants and animal matter floating near the ocean's surface. Since they're not predators, they need good defensive strategies, and their vampiric look is designed to ward off large creatures who want to eat them. Turning themselves inside out is a defensive mechanism since the spiky areas in the inner skin are more intimidating. They also shoot out a substance that does not have color, but is packed with bioluminescent particles to distract predators. The Vaquita Going out on a boat off the coast of Mexico sounds like the perfect vacation. The sun, the blue water, the most endangered sea creature. Wait, what? The vaquita isn't dangerous, but don't expect it to stick around to say hello or sign any autographs. It's incredibly shy. This little cow, that's what it means in Spanish, is one tiny sea mammal. With those black markings around its eyes, it looks more like a sea panda to me. Seeing one should make you feel very special. They're on the brink of extinction, mostly because they get caught by accident in fishing nets. It's estimated that there's only 10 left in the wild. The Blue Dragon 
This little creature looks like something out of a kid's fantasy movie. It's called the Blue Glaucus, casually referred to as the Blue Dragon or Blue Angel. It can be found in many places, the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. It's kind of a mollusk and it only grows to be about an inch long. What you think is the back is actually the mollusk's bright underbelly. It regularly floats on its back so that its blue colors help it camouflage with the water's waves. The blue dragon isn't just pretty, it's also smart. It usually feasts on Portuguese man o wars, also known as Fisalia fisalis. The blue dragon stores their stinging cells for later use, in essence, stealing their defensive mechanisms. When the blue dragon is threatened, it releases those stinging cells it stored, directing them at an enemy to sting them with more power than the Portuguese man o war would have been capable of. As they can store a huge amount of stinging cells, they can be a threat to humans. So, if you find one, don't pick it up. It's best to admire it from a distance. The Barrel Eye Fish If you ever wanted to have Superman's X-ray vision, looking at the Barrel Eye Fish will make you feel like you gained that superpower at some point in your life without even realizing it. The Barrel Eye has a transparent head, so you can see how their eyes and brain look inside. This magnificent creature lives in the deep sea. This is the lowest level of the ocean, where strange creatures roam in near-freezing temperatures and constant darkness. They're exposed to water's pressure that's almost 1,000 times that of the surface. If the idea of the deep sea sends a shiver down your spine, stay tuned to learn about another of its creatures later on. The barrel eye fish can be found in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. You might be wondering, why oh why would a fish have a see-through head? And that would be a fair question. Since the species was discovered in 1939, it was believed that the fish's eyes were set to see straight ahead and couldn't move. So it was assumed that they had tunnel vision. Scientists Bruce Robinson and Kim Reisenbickler from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute recently discovered that the fish can move its eyes vertically to see through the top of its translucent head, thus noticing if there are predators or prey nearby. The transparent head also allows more light to enter so they can detect prey better. It's believed that the barrel eye fish eats jellyfish and small fish species. If you dive in the ocean at night, you might be lucky enough to see how orange ball coralomorph blooms in the dark. But make sure to be quick because as soon as you turn on your flashlight to take a good look, it will retract its tubes back into itself. The Megalodon the whale shark isn't the biggest shark known to humans. If the entire shark species were a kingdom, the prehistoric megalodon would be the ruler of the sea. Megalodon roamed the ocean a long time ago, oh, about 15.9 to 2.6 million years back between the early Miocene and late Pliocene eras. While they've long been extinct, people are still amazed to learn about these gigantic sea beasts. Megalodon could reach anywhere between 45 feet to 60 feet in length with jaws more than 6 feet wide. A fossil of a tooth that once belonged to a megalodon measured at 7 inches. Needless to say, I'm pretty stoked that these guys have long been extinct. But there's still some adventurers out there hoping to meet this monster one day. The Dumbo Octopus This adorable creature, or creepy creature, or however you want to see it, is officially called Grimpoteuthis. More casually, it's referred to as the Dumbo octopus named after the Disney character. Though Dumbo, the elephant, not the octopus, was teased for his big ears, it's highly unlikely that this adorable octopus gets teased by its water neighbors. They are the deepest living octopuses living in the deep sea, and you know how scary that place is. They're only about 8 inches tall and spend their days hovering just above the seafloor eating snails, worms, and other food they find in the current or near ocean vents. There are nearly 17 species of Dumbo octopus, and they all have differences in height, color, and body parts. If you can't get enough strange animals, you'll be glad to learn that the deep sea has barely been explored by humans. So, keep an eye out. There are bound to be more fascinating animals discovered in the deep in the future. The Sea Angel These creatures might look and sound pretty cute, but their diet is far from sunshine and lollipops. Their favorite food are sea butterflies. They lay mucus traps for them and wait in ambush. The Squat Anemone Shrimp This shrimp is tiny, only 0.5 inches. It's also known as a dancer shrimp because of its peculiar behavior. When agitated, 
it raises its bottom above its head and does a little dance. Divers also say it readily jumps on their hands and cleans them. The Coconut Crab This guy may look pretty creepy, especially when the sun goes down. Mature coconut crabs are around 3 feet in length. Their preferred foods are coconuts, but they can also hunt down lizards and even large birds. The Slender Snipe Eel Slender Snipe Eel is a slim and long creature that's still a mystery for marine scientists. It's 4 feet long, and it has at least 750 bones in its spine, which is much more than any other animal in the world. The Sea Pen Sea pen is 7 feet long and it has a lot of varieties, but most of them look indeed like a pen or a quill. The similarity is even more striking when the animal has a water-filled bulb that anchors it to the floor. The Persian Carpet Flatworm This creature looks indeed like a carpet, despite being very small by comparison. It's only 4 inches long, able to become both male and female. It doesn't really mate with other flatworms. Rather, it fights them for the right to bear posterity. The Flamingo Tongue Sea Snails Tourists love these extraordinary snails for their pretty colors, thinking it's a shell, but in fact, the shell is quite dull and hidden underneath colorful soft tissues. They eat softer, toxic parts of corals and store their toxins to protect themselves. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends.